Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we commemorate the feast day of St. Catherine of Siena, a doctor of the church, a messenger of God's love, a messenger of God's protective love for all of us. And so to prepare ourselves, to receive this message of our Lord, let us first acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's Passion, and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people participating in the mystery of Christ may ever exalt in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on, on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent word to them, My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about forty years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, for forty years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant. In my holy oil, I have anointed him that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 
Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, He said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, No slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen, but so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we reflect on the power of sending a message. The power of sending a messenger. And the message that this messenger has changes lives. Ang atin pong mga pagbasa at uh, pagdiriwang ngayong araw ay nagpapaalala sa atin ng kapangyarihan ng pagpapadala ng mensahe. At kung paanong ang mensahe ay maaaring makapagpabago ng buhay. Our Gospel reading today tells us of Jesus reminding us of being a messenger, Himself being a messenger of the Father. The Father sending Him to proclaim the message of the Father's love to the world. And therefore, the disciples of Jesus, He calls also messengers. To send a message is a sign of love. That is why when the Father sent His Son to bring His message of salvation to us, that is a sign of God's love, of the Father's love. And when Jesus now sends His apostles, His disciples to us, then that is the sign of the love of Jesus by sending His messengers, by sending His message. My dear brothers and sisters, when God sends His message, it is a sign of His great love for us. Kaya po ngayong araw ay yan po ang ating bibigyan ng halaga, ang pagpapadala ng Diyos ng Kanyang mensahe bilang tanda ng kanyang pagmamahal. And when God sends His message, He changes lives. 
That is why when Jesus was sent to this world, the message of Jesus changed the lives of His disciples and the many people who follow Jesus. In our first reading, we hear St. Paul preaching in the synagogue, proclaiming the message given to him by Jesus, how God works in our lives. In his preaching, he was telling of the Old Testament until the time of the coming of Jesus. St. Paul and the other disciples were sent by Jesus so that they could give the message of God's love through faith in Jesus Christ. Mga minamahal na kapatid, kapag ang Diyos ay nagpapadala ng mensahe, ang Ama ipinadala si Jesus na kanyang mabuting balita, mabuting mensahe. At gayon naman ang mga alagad ni Jesus naman, kagaya ni San Pablo, ay ipinapadala rin naman sa atin ang mabuting balita na galing kay Jesus. At kapag tinanggap natin ang mensahe na ito, nakapagpapabago ng buhay, ang mensahe ng Diyos na mapagmahal, kapag kanyang ipinadala sa atin, mababago, mapabubuti ang ating buhay. Kaya nga kapag mayroong nagpapadala ng mensahe sa atin, no? halimbawa, may nagpadala ng mensahe sa iyo, at kapag binasa mo ay minsan maaalala mo na buti siya na ay naalala ako. No? Minsan gumagaan ng loob mo kapag mayroong nagpadala ng mensahe sa iyo sapagkat tanda ito na naalala ka niya, nagmamakal siya at nagmamalasakit siya. Ganyan ang kapangyarihan ng pagpapadala ng mensahe. Minsan po, nung ako ay uh, nagkaroon ng sakit at parang minsan natatakot ka kapag may sakit ka. Someone sent me just a, a, a short uh, text message And that text message said that, Do not be afraid because our God does not want you to become sick. He is a good Father and He does not want you to become sick. He wants you to be cured and to be healed. You know, that short message from one friend really uh, removed the fear in me. Parang nawala lahat ng pag-aalala, ng takot, pangamba, dahil lang sa isang mensahe na ipinadala sa akin. God's message really can change lives. Today, we celebrate St. Catherine of Siena. And this Dominican saint herself was a messenger Noong siya po ay uh, uh, nabubuhay, isa sa mga ginagawa palagi ni Santa Catalina ng Siena ay magpadala ng sulat. O, yan po ang hobby ni St. Catherine of Siena. She sends letters to different people, not only to his friends. He sent letters even to kings, even to popes. Reminding them of God's love, reminding them of God's call, reminding them of God's concern for them. Noong si St. Catherine ay uh, pumanaw na, kinolekta nila ang kanyang mga sulat. Hindi pa lahat yun ay nakolekta nila, pero ang dami nilang nakolekta. At doon nakita nila kung paanong si Santa Catalina ay tunay nga na napakagandang tagapagdala ng balita ng Diyos, ng pagmamahal ng Diyos sa kapwa. When they compiled the letters written by St. Catherine, they proved that 
Saint Catherine was really a messenger of God's love, of God's good news. And all these letters written to people changed their lives. Sabi ng mga taong nakatanggap ng kanyang sulat, noong nabasa nila ang mensahe ni Santa Catalina, ang kanyang mga sulat sa kanila, nabago ang kanilang buhay. Gumaling sila. Napabuti ang kanilang buhay dahil sa mabuting mensahe na dala ni Santa Catalina sa kanila. My dear brothers and sisters, in this Eucharistic celebration, the Father sends us His messenger, Jesus Christ, bringing us the message of God's love that will change our lives. And Jesus now sends His disciples to become also messengers of faith messengers of hope. Let us pray that in this Mass, we might receive God's message that will change our lives. Amen. Gathered together as a people in need, we pray to God the Father with humble hearts, trusting in His great mercy. For every petition, let us say, Father, bless us in Christ. Father, bless us in Christ. That those who exercise leadership in the Church may keep their commitment alive in the preaching of the Gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Father, bless us in Christ. That those invested with authority may lead and guide the people in the spirit of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, bless us in Christ. That those who have abandoned their faith may be led back to the family of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, bless us in Christ. That those disheartened by suffering and sickness may find strength and consolation from Jesus, who was victorious over sin and death, let us pray to the Lord. Father, bless us in Christ. That the faithful departed may receive their eternal reward, let us pray to the Lord. Father, bless us in Christ. Almighty Father, you call us to be with you. May we be faithful in following your Son on the way to your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name. 
for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world, it nourished the life of St. Catherine through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Laetare, Alleluia. Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia.